City of North Glen Channel 8, keeping you informed of events in your community. I'd like to call the regular city council study session to order. Joanna, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Downing. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dodge. Here. Council Member Snetzinger. Here. Council Member Mullet, that might be late tonight. Council Member Sowers. Here. Council Member Joe Brown. Here. Council Member Becky Brown. Here. Council Member Whitman. Here. Council Member Esquivel. Here. Thank you. First on the agenda is proposed 2018 budget, and we're going to oh, turn it over to you for departmental. Okay. Uh, so this is the department presentation uh, portion of the budget. We'll go through a few iterations of the budget. And so tonight we're going to talk uh, to each uh, department and kind of walk through key initiatives and issues, kind of new things that are on the horizon for 2018 uh, in each department. And I am going to start off uh, to briefly go over the legislative budget. Uh, you'll notice on each of the pages we reference the proposed budget page that this is on. So the presentation looks a little bit different than the pages, but we wanted to give a reference kind of in your larger binders um, where you can find more information uh, on each department. And so we're behind the blue tab is, is where we are uh, tonight. So on the legislative uh, department budget, that's city council's budget and the boards and commissions uh, group. So I'll talk real brief about that. Uh, you'll see an increase on the purchase services and miscellaneous categories. Uh, so totaling $40,000, a 5% increase of the total budget. Uh, you'll see this, the breakout of the divisions, uh, city council versus the boards and authorities and no changes to the boards and authorities. And I'll jump to the initiatives uh, that were being proposed uh, for the 2018 budget. First is $25,000 uh, for purchase services, and that's really made up of uh, an increase of legal services over the last several years, and then additionally the lobbyist uh, that was contracted in the prior year and then moving forward uh, that hadn't been budgeted. Uh, so legal services, the prosecutor, and the lobbyist make up that line item uh, in the legislative budget. And then the next item is a small uh, increase of $5,000 uh, to support uh, community uh, sponsorships. That was a request at the last uh, OAF meeting uh, that they had to bring, <coughs> to add an extra $5,000 uh, to make the grant opportunities and then the sponsorship opportunities both $15,000. And so that's been included in the proposed budget uh, for the le legislative side of things. If we go back, uh, the city council division, you'll see that that changed uh, $15,000 on that miscellaneous item. Uh, that's made up of the dues and fees, the grants and donations. And the $15,000 at the beginning of 2017, we moved $10,000 from the city manager budget uh, when we made that change to the OAF to include the sponsorships. So the $10,000 uh, from 2017 plus the $5,000 uh, being recommended from the OAF committee, that totals the $15,000. Can I just share something? Since the Vail Board will not be funding this year uh, due to a shortage in our on balance, um, you might uh, have those organizations that usually ask for grants out of the bail board. They may come to the OAF for requests. So just to give you a kind of a heads up, I don't know if they will, you know, but in the past they have. So okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. 
Sure. What are some of those? Um, alternatives to family violence, the SANE programs, um, Spot. Let's see, and, and, and those type of nonprofit organizations that come to us. You know. Yeah, I, just, I was curious, but I remember yeah. the alternative to things. Right, things. right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question? How much of the twenty-five thousand is an increase to the lobbyists? You know, I, I don't think that there's any specific. The legal fees actually fluctuate year over year, so this was basically to steady. Uh, historical numbers, so that uh, nothing was specific to the to the lobbyist. Okay. Although that is a new contract. Um, but when, but the contract that we signed is the one that's in effect right now, and then he'll come to us for another contract, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. What's the budget? In the next few months. With a proposed increase. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, I think that was what it was talked about, but I don't think it was a rather significant increase. I, I don't think the committee really It was or wasn't? I'm sorry. It wasn't. Okay. Yeah. And they haven't finalized anything yet to bring to council. Thanks. Any other comments or input on the leg legislative budget? There's Kara? Um, remind me why we have such a high contingency in our budget and we didn't use it last year, and is it just flowing right over the 100000 and why we keep that high of a contingency, I guess? Yeah, so the charter allows for a contingency to be set within the budget for city council, uh, and it's for unforeseen things that come up that, that council would then direct. Staff may make a recommendation for some unforeseen, unforeseen use. Uh, so we, we have that in case, and basically as a contingency in case something comes up. I understand what a contingency is, but if we did we not use it at all last year? Correct. So it just seems like maybe it's high. That's my thought. It's a hundred thousand dollars. It makes our budget look, you know, goes much higher than it was last year. So um, yeah, it's a thought that maybe it should be lower if we're not using it. Okay. Historically, have we used it? You know. Um, the last time I recall it being used was for a city manager recruitment. <laughs> well, we're not going to yeah, I was going to say, we're not planning on that, you know, but, um, okay. All right, so that's a good comment. And I'll move on to the city manager budget and touch on some things there, and I'll have economic development and communications come up as well. So of course city manager is in charge of the day-to-day -day operations and implementing the policies set by council. A um, couple of <coughs> areas to note uh, in this department's budget is that actually has gone down significantly. Uh, due to one-time expenditures in 2017, the EPA grant, uh, we'll touch on that a little bit more. Uh, so some of the numbers look a little, you know, a little odd sometimes when you see big reductions uh, in the budgets, but it's typically uh, due to the prior year, uh, one-time expenditures uh, being removed uh, as a budgetary comparison. And you'll see the divisions uh, within the city manager department, uh, administration and public communications and economic development. I'll have, I guess I'll have one comment. In the administration division, uh, there's a proposed increase of $5,000, uh, and that's largely for uh, facilitators. Uh, we're doing a little bit more uh, as far as gathering council and staff, or just council and staff uh, separately uh, to kind of plan and uh, look into the future a little bit on an ongoing basis, and there needs to be some budget added uh, to include those events. Then I'll turn it over to communications. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Um, the first two are um, equipment to help facilitate streaming of council meetings to Facebook and the website. The switcher is a piece of equipment that allows us to put supers on the screen and graphics which would be names of council members, names of the, of the mayor, and the cover slide for um, 
the council meeting. So it'll look professional and polished. And that would go both on uh, Facebook and on the website. The second one, transmission equipment, that money was requested to fill in any gaps in the equipment we ordered uh, for tightrope, the Channel 8 broadcast equipment. This is required by Comcast and we purchase any extra pieces through them. Uh, let's see, marketing videos. Uh, we, we, when we have um, HD, we're required to produce videos or show videos. And we've been producing North Glen now. We've produced 10 of those and plan to do two more before the election. But it would also be good to show, to have videos of city services, trash collection, street repair, how to get a passport, all kinds of services that we could uh, talk about and run on Channel 8 a lot. So that would help people. And that's it for this year. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? All right. So um, the Economic Development Department had three budget package requests. And the good news is that we, they will, um, the good news is that we don't have any financial impact. Um, the first two are the EPA assessment grants. This is the third year, 2018 will be the third year that we will have this grant. We feel like we will have an extra 70,000, 35 for petroleum and 30 for hazardous, which will finish out the grant. This is 100% reimbursable. The last package request is to expand the 2014 pilot wayfinding sign program that's on Melody. It's been highly successful. We have gotten over the years a lot of requests from the industrial parks. They're tucked away, and a lot of those businesses just don't have any visibility. So what we'd like to do is um, expand the wayfinding to, and there's about 300 businesses in the Huron Industrial Park off of 115th and Irma and Leroy Drive Industrial Park. So there's a lot of businesses back there. So we plan on putting two kiosks, um, 16 directional panels, so 32 businesses on both sides could be actually um, advertised. The locations would be at 104th and Irma for the Industrial Park on Irma and Leroy, and one kiosk will be at 115th and Huron. We're going to charge the businesses $400 to cover the sign manufacturing, the installation, the maintenance and administration costs and overhead. And that will cover the cost for two kiosks, which are approximately $6,400 each, or a total of $12,800. So we believe that we can get 32 businesses on those two kiosks because there's 300 businesses out there and we've had a high demand of requests for them. And therefore, there would be no financial impact on our budget. Any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, Jason. Then I did want to mention that uh, <clears throat> the package requests are behind the yellow tab in the binder that we provided, so there's a little bit more detail if you'd like to read about those. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Joanna Small, City Clerk, here to present the City Clerk Department budget, um, which is on page 52 of the proposed budget book. So the City Clerk's Department um, is fortunate we get to administer democratic processes such as elections, access to city records, and legislative actions. Many of our functions are actually mandated by federal, state, or local laws. Um, and the city clerk's budget is less than 1% of the city's total budget. Jason will check the math for me on that. Um, but because of that, I think you get a lot of bang for the buck um, with our tiny budget. And we actually do contribute a little to the revenue side of things as well. Um, our passport program has been bringing in revenue as well as our licensing function um, and also our certification of liens annually. So in 2016, we generated about $165,000 and de I definitely expect that number to be higher in 2018. So the slide that you're viewing right now um, shows the different allocations for personnel, purchase services, and supplies, non-capital equipment, and also miscellaneous. The funding has been reallocated among the line items, um, so, and that accounts for some one-time costs that we um, had this year for the uh, non-capital equipment. So 
we've reallocated those numbers based on our anticipated program activity in 2018. So overall, there's a 2.5% increase, and that is due to personnel costs at the end of the day when you look at that. So are you, are you controlling that or am I? No, go ahead. Okay. It magically moved, so I was just going <laughs> to don't touch. So our key issues and key initiatives, um, they're pretty simple. We don't have any major projects. We don't have any package requests either. So enhance and promote city clerk services. Um, and what that looks like is we've been evaluating our, our programs um, since 2016. We've had some turnover in staff, so that's always a good time to take a step back and see how a program is running and if there's any way that we can improve certain processes. Uh, so we've, we've done that. With the, pro with the programs that we currently offer, some of the ways that we're going to enhance and promote those are uh, we've, we have a Saturday passport day scheduled for September 23rd. Um, I'll talk about our passport appointment system a, li a little bit later on, but that is definitely one way that we still want to provide that service and, and encourage more people to take advantage of that. We also have a lot of Spanish-speaking customers. We recognize that, and so we want to embrace that. We've actually um, gone a step above what the Department of State requires, and we have a Spanish-translated application guide for customers that they can use in our office. Um, none of us are fluent in Spanish, but we can definitely offer some sort of resource for those customers. We have a new city clerk Twitter account. I, uh, still in the very beginning stages of promoting that and using it, but we're diving into the social media um, era. We figure that's a great way to connect with certain residents, so we're all about finding new ways to connect. Um, also being available in City Hall and for special events, I've had the great opportunity to attend a few board meetings, which has been, um, for me, definitely beneficial to reach out and make a connection with residents. Hopefully they find the information that we present beneficial as well. Um, the school tours are always fun to do as well. Um, we just really want to make certain, it's, it's kind of that intangible part of our job, we want to make those connections positive with people who come into our office. So then when we do have to deliver some not so positive information about a lien that's been filed against their property um, or an appeal that didn't go their way, they'll still know that we're there and they can expect service from us and, and that we are a resource there. So then the second bullet is manage resources and improve operational efficiencies for licensing, permitting, and passport programs. So on May 1st, we actually implemented an appointment only system for our passports. Um, there's an asterisk with that. We typically don't turn people away if they don't have an appointment. But what that's um, let us do is to really manage our resources. And those resources are staff and then the physical office space. We were having um, issues with you know, customers all showing up at one time, the overflow into the hallway wasn't ideal and um, so this allows us to to control how we allocate staff to that function and our space as well we I don't know if all of you have been in the city clerk's office recently but we improved our physical office space too we needed to make definite workstations for all of our employees we have a part-time position that has been filled which is awesome um, but that person didn't have workspace in our common area. So just based on getting some new office furniture, we've created spaces for all three and a half people to, to have access to the public. Um, it's been great. It was low cost. We've ha we had the old office furniture since 2004, so I believe we were due for it. Um, and it makes it more inviting for folks to come in. So that has worked out great. So we'll continue. Um, one more thing. We, if you've been in the clerk's office, it, it feels less busy. Um, but looking at our statistics, we've actually accepted 22% more passport applications than this time last year. So we're actually continuing to increase. It's not our goal to make that our only function. Um, but it's worked out well. 
it, it, it's better customer service on both ends and we're actually continuing to increase. So it's a win-win for us. All righty. So um, one of the decreases that you'll see in the budget is, like I mentioned earlier, that non-capital equipment. Um, that was for the, the office equipment. And so the, the funding that we won't use in that account next year has been reallocated. Um, and the priorities that we have set for 2018 are uh, legislative support. We're going to continue to provide timely notice of meetings, public hearings, um, legislative actions, and we'll continue to support city council and the boards and commissions and any ad hoc committees that may arise. Uh, records management, now that our office is fully staffed, I am super excited to be able to allocate those resources that we'll have next year to those different records management priorities that have kind of taken a back seat with the staff turnover. And then of course licensing, permitting, and passports. We're going to continue to administer licensing functions. Our two major licensing functions are liquor licensing and marijuana licensing. Um, and then of course we want to continue to operate as a passport acceptance facility on behalf of the Department of State. Uh, customer service and public engagement. We want to continue to foster a positive, positive work environment in the clerk's office and provide that high level of customer service. Um, and then also <coughs> continue to pursue opportunities that will enhance um, how we provide information to the public. I think that's just another way to make that connection and to, to promote the city in a positive way. And also staff retention and development. You'll see a slight increase in that. Um, it must be lumped into the supplies non-capital non equipment. But it is a, a slight increase in our training uh, budget because we do have a fully staffed office. Um, continuing education is very important to me. We're fortunate that we have two certified municipal clerks on staff. Um, but with new staff, we definitely want to make sure that we're all improving and developing, especially because of the, it seems like, continual changes to law, to uh, state law regarding elections, open records this past session. Um, so we want to make sure that we're up to date on all of the functions that we're responsible for. So I believe that's the last slide. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might questions. have. All right. Comments, questions? I have a question. Yes. So your part-time person, are they continuing? I think you were working on a scanning project of some of the materials you had. Are they going to be able to help you with that? They will, but that won't be their primary function. Right now we have them scheduled to, um, they're there in the afternoon, and their primary function is to help out with passport applications. But when we don't have um, appointments scheduled or when we want to control that and dedicate their time to another project, they definitely will help out with those other special projects. Okay. Anyone else? Carol. Just have to comment that every time I go in there, your clerks are just friendly and they wait on people with a smile and answer questions completely. Um, so you've got a really good staff that came in there right now. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Right. Thank, Thank you, you. Joanna. Okay. Up next is management services. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Paula Jensen, Director of Management Services. All right, as a reminder, Management Services has three divisions, Human Resources, Community Engagement, and Municipal Court. So overall department summary, um, we have an increase in our full-time equivalency. We are requesting a part-time position. I'll get to that um, in the next couple slides. Personnel is increasing uh, just under $10,000, and that covers uh, salary adjustments, any changes to benefits, and then that um, additional part-time position. Purchase services is up 50000 supplies non-capital down 1000 and miscellaneous is down 88000 or close to 89000 I would love to take credit for that, but I have to hand that to the Vail Board. 
um, because of how we do the accounting for that, it's realized in my budget, which looks like I'm saving tons and tons of money. Um, I so. have to take credit for some of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll move on. Uh, this is a breakdown of the division summary. Um, in municipal court, actually, I'm going to, I'm just going to look at community engagement here for a minute because the next few slides I'll talk about municipal court and human resources increases. Community engagement, um, you'll see a $10,000 increase. Um, that is not the result of a package request, but the result of personnel and benefit increases. Um, year over year, we saw some different elections in regards to benefits adding dependents. So there's an increase there, but it's not a specific package request. It's personnel. So then I'll shift into um, issues and key initiatives. Um, looking at human resources, um, we have submitted a package request um, and was approved by the city manager for a approximate increase of 3% to our property and liability insurance. Um, that's just under $10,000. That's across funds, um, but covers any of those um, incidences like uh, uh, accidents with equipment, um, damage to equipment, things like that. So we're anticipating a 3% increase. So that is just under $10,000. And then also in the Human Resources Division budget, um, a package request in the amount of $50,000 was submitted for record keeping fees for the retirement plan. Um, the city's retirement plan is a 401A defined contribution. Um, employees make a mandatory contribution and then the employer makes a mandatory contribution. There are administrative, legal, and consulting fees to operate this retirement plan, and those fees are covered by plan forfeitures. So when an employee leaves before they're vested, those dollars are forfeited. They go back into a fund that pays for these fees. The record-keeping fees, however, um, with ICMA, um, are paid through revenue sharing of certain funds within the plan. Um, this package request takes the um, fees out of the hands of employees paying through revenue sharing and the city will be paying those fees. It's a chunk of money and it is ongoing, but the record keeping fees will be paid by the city. I'm going to defer to Mr. Loveland. Okay. <coughs> um, Industry change uh, in the defined contribution arena has really asked for transparency in those fees that are being charged to, a, to a participants. Uh, the, each board, the police pension board and the general employee uh, pension board uh, looked at that uh, with our consultants, trying to identify you know, the best way uh, to charge those fees. Currently, through revenue sharing, not all of the, the funds that participants have to choose participate in revenue sharing. So I use really round numbers. So if you have an expense ratio for somebody to manage a fund of 1%, everyone in that fund would pay 1%. Another fund might also have an expense ratio to manage the fund of 1%, but they also might participate in revenue sharing. And we'll add another 1% for round numbers. Uh, so those participants would be paying 2%. So if I am an employee, I am an employee. If I'm in a single fund that pays one percent of an expense ratio, versus Paula, who's in the fund that charges two percent, a portion of uh, a portion of her earnings is going towards paying the revenue sharing for the record keeping fees with ICMA, while I'm not participating. So the the options are really to add put a percentage base, you know, that every employee pays, say, 1%, or, or come up with a flat rate. Uh, when the pension boards took a look at that, there's really not a, there wasn't a very clean way to do that. If you apply a percentage, 1% on my account balance of a million dollars, I'm paying a large portion versus the person with a $10,000 balance, although we're getting the exact same service. Um, and vice versa, if we 
apply $200 as a flat rate, uh, my balance, I'm paying a very small portion of that cost versus somebody uh, who has a smaller balance. Uh, so we discussed that. Uh, I wanted to bring that forward as a package request. Maybe you can mm -hmm. uh, add in. Uh, we felt that that was an appropriate use uh, of the city's funds since the forfeitures currently, are, the city currently is not paying anything for uh, the retirement plan that it's, that's offered. Uh, forfeitures from, uh, that, from staff that leave prior to being fully vested is what's paying uh, those charges for legal fees uh, and, so, and consulting fees. Uh, so that's why we'd like to add this uh, in the 2018 budget and move forward uh, with the city picking up the, the costs on those. And my understanding, too, is the industry is moving in that direction. You know, we were one of the only the communities that did not do this. Is that, is that we'll actually be one of the first to do this. Oh, okay. Um, so, but partially... Partially because the industry is starting to evolve into this mm -hmm. uh, with identifying the best way to charge participants the fees. Uh, we felt that it was a good uh, overall $50,000 across the entire city it was a good investment for uh, really what it's going to do is uh, even out the playing field uh, for all participants. Uh, and additionally, you know, the, the net income on their investments will actually increase by not having to participate in the revenue sharing. So fifty thousand uh, dollars across, you know, three or four hundred participants uh, and retirees that are currently in uh, in the plan. So. Okay. So basically, you're trying to make it fair for our employees and give an additional benefit for our employees. Correct. Is mm -hmm. what it is. Yes. Right. It's a pretty significant cost for the city to carry to take on when we are already tribute to the retirement plans as well, so that's just a lot of fees for them here. Yeah. Anyone else? How much does that fee fluctuate? Like, is that going to be 50000 for the next five years, or does it fluctuate a lot? Uh, it's actually going to go down, uh, I believe, in 2018 because we've uh, renegotiated the agreement with ICMA. And so we're in the process uh, in the next couple of months of uh, signing that contract. And I believe it's actually going to go down to about thirty-six or $37,000. So, and this is an ongoing cost that has been part of the defined contribution plan for years and years. It's just been uh, paid for by employees. All right. Anyone else? All right. Thank you for that explanation. Sure. No, no. Any questions on the human resource, on the uh, property liability insurance increase before I switch? Okay. Municipal court, um, we have an increase of about $6,300 in personnel costs. Uh, our municipal court supervisor submitted a package request to add an additional community service coordinator to the staff. It's six hours a week. And what this will allow for is to better help us manage the juvenile community service program. We currently have a community service coordinator on who works six hours a week. Um, and she can't keep up with the number of juveniles that are sentenced through municipal court to do community service. Um, I implemented, oh, probably a year ago, a staff to juvenile ratio that we could not exceed on a Saturday. Um, what was happening is we had one community service coordinator trying to manage 15 to 20 kids and it's too much. It's just too much. Um, so we've had to push out community service dates for those juveniles, but what's happening is we're not hitting then the court date that the judge has set for the juvenile to have the community service completed. Um, so with this, we'll have two staff members doing those community service days on Saturdays, and we can increase the number of juveniles performing community service and better meet the court dates. The juvenile community service workers do pay a fee to participate in community service, so there is an offset to this $6,300. Okay. 
And then the other change in uh, the municipal court budget is, as the mayor stated earlier, um, the Vail budget has been reduced to zero as the board voted to suspend Vail for 2018. Right. Okay. Any questions on the municipal court changes? Questions? Comments? Okay. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Thank you. All right, Jason. All right, next up is technology. Council, Bob Blair, Director of Technology. Um, we support technology throughout the, the city. Uh, the department summary, you'll see personnel went up. Um, that's due to market and budget. The purchase services went up, 33,000. I'll talk about that when we go over the package requests. Supplies, not capital, went down slightly. That's our computer replacement schedule. It's just a variation in how many computers we're buying for the next year. And then uh, capital outlay is slightly lower. That's our servers. So that purchase services, the bulk of that increase is um, Comcast Fiber. Uh, in the previous franchise agreement, Comcast provided dark fiber to the cities and the school district to use connect for connectivity however they wanted. We used it to connect the water plant, city hall, and uh, M&O buildings. Um, they removed that from all the franchise agreements when they renegotiated them, so we're faced with the same thing the other cities are. Our cost is going to be 20000 a year for what's closer to market value for uh, connectivity between the buildings. Um, we also have three server replacements scheduled for next year for 46000 And as a part of the 2018 work plan, we have plans to implement a uh, citizen relationship management system. That will actually be neutral to the budget. It's going to replace citizen serve, which right now is just used for code enforcement. And uh, we believe we can get a CRM system for comparable to what we're paying for uh, citizen serve. That's the highlights. That's it. Any questions? Okay. Questions? I'm excited for the new CRM. Can you give us a little bit of an intro to what you're thinking with the CRM? What it's going to look like? What it's going to offer citizens? Yeah, it'd be similar to what some of the other cities have. It'll have an app that uh, people can download. They can uh, see a pothole or graffiti or something in the city that they want to report to the, the city, and they can take a picture of it. and. Uh, uh, put in some basic information about it. It'll interface with the website. It, it handles workflow, so it'll route it to the department that's responsible for uh, whatever that piece is. There'll also be a, a place on the website where people can log in there and, and uh, enter issues or track their issues. And all departments will be uh, required to use it, so we'll have one central place where that data goes in, and then for uh, directors and the city manager as they need to respond to issues they can go into that system and see all the history that's happened so there's not as much disjointed information between departments it will all be in one place it should give better um, decision making and, and uh, feedback to the residents sounds wonderful thank you okay. anyone else great thank you Bob. Uh, next up is finance. I'm Jason Loveland, the finance director, uh, filling in today, so you don't have to wait for anybody to come up. Uh, you know, finance is responsible for the administration recording of all the financial activities of the city, uh, serves as the treasurer of you know, investing in the city's funds. <clears throat> Internally, we take care of accounts payable and payroll uh, mostly, and then also utility billing uh, and the sales tax collection and compliance aspects uh, of running the city. Uh, as you'll see, the, you know, the no change uh, in staffing, the personnel increase of uh, $35,000 uh, due to the market increases and then uh, elections made on benefits uh, from year to year. So a 3.8% increase there. And you'll notice uh, about 73% of, of the finance budget is personnel, so uh, things like training and professional education are very important to a group to the group uh, as we move forward. 
uh, purchase services. Uh, we pay for a lot of postage with utility billing, clearly, uh, 10,000 customers uh, each month. Uh, the banking fees, audits, uh, things like that are in that line item of $340,000. Uh, we just had one request this year uh, to increase in the water and sewer funds, uh, credit card processing uh, fees. As more people are using their credit cards and getting uh, you know, a little bit more efficient with their bill paying, uh, kind of the, just the cost of doing business is we, on, the, on that end, absorb those fees on transactions. Uh, we've been working with our bank, uh, with those processing companies, really ongoing. Uh, to see how we can uh, reduce those fees and over the last several years there's just been an increase uh, over time and it's, it, was, it was time in 2018 to, to plan for that increase and add some additional dollars to cover cover those expenditures. Uh, for 2018 also, you know, we've talked a lot in the budget and ongoing about capital financing plans, uh, working with our financial advisor, uh, working with uh, the credit agencies that will be key in 2018 as we move some projects forward as well and then 2018 is an even numbered year which is when the uh, finance committee and myself get to review and up make updates to the uh, financial policies of the city so uh, doesn't cost anything just some time and effort but uh, that will be something that uh, will be uh, pretty significant on that committee and then the department uh, as we move into 2018. So that was a brief, brief finance update, but that's okay. All right. right. Questions? <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Planning and developments. Thanks. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Brooks Fabota, Director of Planning and Development. Just knocked over. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, for for this year's budget, we are uh, overall we're showing an 11 and a half percent decrease uh, per last year's uh, budget request. Um, we are made up of three divisions: uh, the planning, the planning department, building, and neighborhood services. Um, here is a reflection of where you'll see those decreases, and uh, essentially for operations. Um, we're doing less, we're budgeting, requesting less for uh, planned projects, and so that's where the majority of that reduction is being reflected. Okay, uh, so with, we have a couple package requests. Uh, the first one is the zoning code update and sustainability audit and work plan. These are carryover uh, requests for budget that's going to, uh, that is currently funded, but will not be completed by year end. Um, also under the zoning code update, we're requesting $5,000 for updating the zoning map. Um, in addition to that, we have $11,000 that we are uh, going to be using for implementation of, of HEAL and sustainability. We currently have several HEAL outreach uh, efforts that we do uh, throughout the community. And with the sustainability uh, audit and work plan, we would be looking to further uh, look at implementation. Um, one of the things that it's not a funded uh, budgeted project, but is something that we are going to be developing with planning and neighborhood services <coughs> is ongoing neighborhood community outreach where we hope to develop some uh, programs that would not be a cost per se, but also try to figure out better ways to engage and activate the community and participation as well as uh, feedback. And I'll, I'll, on my next slide here, I'll touch on a little bit of what Bob talked about in terms of the CRM. Uh, bike pad CIP implementation, we are currently looking at using CDBG dollars uh, to implement the bike ped plan that we hope to have wrapped up by the end of this year. In doing that, we are meeting this Thursday uh, with HUD to go over the qualifications and ensure that this is actually something that they will consider funding as far as uh, project implementation. So this has never been done before with CDBG dollars, and so there's a little bit of negotiation that still needs to take place. But Adams County, uh, as our, as our uh, uh, 
primary agency that dist distributes our funds as a, we are a subrecipient is on board with our effort and so we're meeting with them jointly uh, this Thursday to get clarification. So when we come back to you uh, for the for formal adoption, we'll have a further update on that. Civic Campus, this is something that we're just identifying as, um, because we're not doing as many planning projects this year, is one of the efforts that we'll still be involved with as it moves forward based on the outcome of the public out engagement process. Um, a couple of other things I just want to mention is that Carl's Farm is still something that's on our radar that's very likely to move forward here in the next uh, six to 18 months. Um, marketplace uh, is also something that we believe will also have our staff actively engaged in terms of uh, assisting uh, Nura and ED with the implementation and deployment of the URA one dollars, as well as also working with the new develop with the new owner about um, an interim and a long range vision and uh, implementation plan. Lastly, 112th Station, we've actually we've had a lot of uh, recent interest in developing. Uh, portions of the of the stamp master plan and uh, at some point here in the near term we may be presenting something to the council on that okay. uh, just also once again uh, to touch uh, build upon what uh, Bob was talking about neighborhood services is actually going to be the first uh, module of the CRM that we're going to be developing and as Bob mentioned this is net neutral to the budget because we're going to use the citizen serve budget uh, that we currently have for the implementation of the new CRM system. Um, with that being said, our goal is to really try to help improve accessibility and also accountability so people have better, better resources to, current, to track uh, their, their requests for either a complaint or a follow-up on an investigation. Something that we've been trying to do with Citizen Serve for years and have really struggled with because of the, the way Citizen Serve is structured as a sort of a, a group a co-op um, serve platform that you have to have a certain number of parties that are that are participating with citizen serve agree or want to do that before citizen serve will actually deploy that type of uh, element for it and there's almost always a fee associated with it having our own CRM will be very uh, important and then uh, the last two here is just we're still working and refining on our operational uh, efficiencies in terms of the neighborhood services division and um, as part of our community engagement, neighborhood services will be a, a key partner in how we move that forward. I believe that's the last slide. Any questions? Okay, questions? Yes, Kim. Well, you're maintaining the same number of FTE. Everybody else in the city is getting a raise. How come your personnel costs are going down? Can you explain that? I'd have to defer that one to Jason. On this, we're showing uh, the personnel costs are going up 3.8%, 35,000. I think you're yeah, different departments. Oh, am I? This is slide number 30, right. which is showing a decrease of 21,846 on mine. I'm sorry. Apologies. So uh, changes on the personnel line items can occur from elections, uh, insurance elections. Uh, we can look into that in more detail. There wasn't uh, any reduction in staffing or reduction I, in compensation. Uh, my, I suspect what this may be is that uh, some of our new hires have opted not to have health insurance coverage through the city. They're doing it through their spouse. Uh, that may be a part of that, um, but I don't know uh, in full detail what the others may, other factors may be. That is probably a large factor. Okay, can you, if you could just check on that, because that's significantly different than all the other ones, and I was concerned that it's an error. It's not a bigger issue. We'll verify that. Yeah, so personnel elections and then with turnover, uh, bringing people in at lower rates and things like that can have an effect as well, so. Right, yeah, I just want to make sure that that's what it is, because with this high of a personnel budget line item, well, I would expect that to be a significant increase. Sure, we actually have, we have, uh, uh, we have four, five new employees this year. Okay. Any other questions, comments? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Parks? Parks and recreation and culture.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Amanda Peterson, Director for Parks, Recreation, and Culture. Um, I have for you tonight, as everyone else has, our 2018 proposed budget. I wanted to start with, the, as per the municipal code requirements, we have presented the budget to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. They have had opportunity to review that at two meetings, and at their last meeting did vote to unanimous, unanimously to recommend to move the fo budget forward as presented to the council. Um, as for the department summary, I think this looks like most of the other's personnel changes are primarily due to the proposed increase um, in personnel uh, uh, citywide. The decreases are generally due to one-time capital outlay or non-capital outlay that occurred in 2017 that wouldn't recur in 2018. The next slide divides those between parks and park and recreation divisions. Again, most of that, um, just depending on where in each of those divisions we had capital outlay, um, you can see where, where those um, differ slightly. And then capital improvement projects. We show a decrease in capital improvement projects. We had some major capital improvement projects we've scheduled for 2017. We know those will carry into 2018. Um, and some of those are, are grant dependent with timing. Um, primary carryover um, projects include Northwest Open Space. We are grant dependent on hopefully being able to do a complete project for phase one out there next year. Um, the Parks Burn. Um, and then the Qantas pool and splash pad. The one new project scheduled for next year, I shouldn't say new, uh, we do trail replacement as an ongoing. Generally that's individual pieces of concrete that have heaved or cracked. We have, um, one of our goals is to get to the point where we've replaced all of our asphalt trails with concrete. We have a few little sections left that we haven't been able to absorb yet. Um, so that increase is to be able to start to tackle those remaining uh, asphalt trails. Um, the other C major CIP, obviously, as Brooke mentioned earlier, the department is heavily involved in the, um, or is an active part of the multi-departmental effort to begin implementation of phase one of the Civic Center Master Plan that began this year with the public engagement process. Um, and then there's funding identified, as we discussed at the last study session, um, in the capital improvement budget, not specific to parks and recreation. That brings us to our package requests that are recommended or requested for 2018. We have um, two primary requests. One has a couple of components. So I'll start with pedal boats. We have a fleet of about 12 pedal boats. I should say had a fleet of about 12 pedal boats. Um, we're currently down to 10. Um, the boats deteriorate over time. We have made some requests in the past, unfortunately haven't been funded to date. So we do have 10 boats. We were able to take two out of service last year, use parts from those to, re to repair two of the existing so that we could maintain 10 boats um, and not go down to eight. We're recommending an ongoing replacement program to replace about two boats a year um, on, a, on a regular basis so that we're consistently changing out that fleet. Um, revenues for that program are about $35,000 a year. So if you consider just the boats, um, even exclusive of staff time, the boats pay for themselves in about a year's time. Um, the other item really has three primary components. They're all within the theater. The first is the theater sound console. Um, this is the piece of technology that allows sound to be mixed from the booth so that you have a good listening experience um, from the house. We have a current sound co console. It is about six years old. We generally anticipate a useful life of about, I shouldn't say a useful life of about five years. Through the first five years, we tend to see no problems with those consoles. As we get past the five years, the chance of failure starts to increase. Um, we are requesting a new console, which then the old one would become a backup. We always want to have one in reserve um, so that if a console goes down in the middle of a show, if repairs need to be made, we're never completely out of, out of business. Um, so the console is the first item. The second one is the ClearCom system. Our ClearCom system is, I believe, about 25 years old. Um, it's outdated. It is a wired system, which is, makes communication challenging on stage. It keeps the um, stage manager tied to one spot, 
and the person in the booth tied to one spot because they're attached by a wire. Um, we're proposing replacing that system with a wireless system, which is in line with modern technology. And then an add-on to that system, which is um, the hearing assist, which would allow us to better meet the needs of the hearing impaired individuals who would be maybe attending shows. And those are all I have. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? Questions? Just one, I'm just wondering if, when the, we have a new theater, can some of this equipment be moved? Yes, we yes. have verified, depending on the age of that equipment, but at that point, yes, it, could, it is all mobile equipment that could be moved. None of it is installed. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, police department. While the chief's walking up, I did confirm that the budget for the planning uh, compensation, there were four vacancies last year in planning and development when we developed the budget. So we budgeted for full benefits on those four vacancies. Uh, they've been filled without full benefits uh, at the levels that we had budgeted in the prior year. So that was the timing. Mayor, Council, Jim May, Chief of Police. Uh, we have uh, 87 and a half FTEs. Um, you'll see uh, the big number that jumps out is a capital outlay. Uh, last year, uh, we only uh, received one detective car. Our patrol cars are pushed. This year, we need to replace um, several patrol cars, so that's why that number is uh, pretty high. Uh, our, actually, we have three divisions, but the fourth is uh, that's on the screen is animal control, which falls under patrol. But um, again, the 8.1% increase is personnel, and also the cars included in that number too when it comes to the, our patrol division. Uh, the key, uh, some of the things that we're doing in our package request, uh, one of the things that we found over the last year, we have a very young PRS group and um, also the shortage, so we're trying to get some leads, get some of that experience on those shifts. Um, so we're going to have a you know, supervisor, Kathy Bailey, working days, and then we're going to have some lead workers. Um, and that's to compensate them for uh, you know, working. Uh, they're going to split the week Sunday through Wednesday, Wednesday through Saturday, just so I have that extra experience up there when something um, bad occurs uh, so they can make the right phone calls and get everything prepared, plus ask questions uh, or answer questions to those young uh, uh, records personnel. Uh, vehicle replacement. Uh, we have one uh, uh, investigations car that's going to be replaced next year, and then also uh, three patrol cars. Uh, victim service radios, uh, we're purchasing four of those. We have a shared victim services group uh, with Thornton. Uh, they sent me a, a bill stating they want us to buy those uh, for them, four radios, and I was like, nah, we're going to buy our own, and then we're going to loan those to the victim services unit. So that's why that's in there. Uh, still try to continue some of our impact stuff. Uh, one of the big projects we're going to take on for uh, next year is uh, some of our illegal grows in our neighborhoods. Uh, we've had quite a few of those. Uh, so one of the first things that's going to happen on that, I'm going to try to uh, you know, get with you and change the ordinance to mimic the state on the 12 plant minimum in residential, residential areas. And then also do some more impact uh, with our uh, drug task force guys and then uh, some of our officers. Uh, you mean 12 plant maximum? Yes. Than minimum? 12, yeah, is that what I said? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go that way. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Uh, complete pro Somebody would like what Yeah, I bet you they would like that. Oh, we're going to move to North Plan, right? Yeah. Uh, com uh, complete uh, property evidence inventory and audit and uh, reconcile any issues. Uh, we have probably 50,000 pieces of property evidence in this next year. Uh, we'll be uh, moving into the new building and we have to move all that. So one of the things we want to go back, and some of these pieces of property date back to the beginning of time, you know, seems like. So uh, we're going to be hitting that real hard and heavy. Um, and make sure that happens. And then the other thing too is uh, Commander Osgood still uh, continuing to develop emergency management operations and rolling that out to everybody. We have a good skeleton right now. We just have to you know, fill in some more of the pieces. And then the other thing too that's not on here is the, um, uh, the implementation of uh, records management system. This is a countywide project. 
uh, two of our person, actually one of my personnel, one of Bob's personnel has been, uh, you know, the, kind of the tip of the spear trying to get this pushed through. Uh, we're ahead of the game when it comes to North Glen on that, you know, the implementation. However, some of the other partners are a little bit behind us, so we have to push out that date, probably first quarter of uh, 2018, you know, to get, you know, turn the switch on for that. So um, it's concerning because our other system is, you know, it's in a death spin and uh, hopefully we can hold it together until we flip the switch to the new RMS system. And then, uh, you know, another big one right now is uh, I have my, you know, on paper when we're going through the uh, planning of the new building and everything else on how that's going to work and how that's going to function, um, the efficiencies on how that's going to be put together. So we have uh, each division commander really working with their um, people, trying to figure out, hey, how this is going to work so we can see some of those efficiencies moving into the new building. Um, and then when we get in there, we'll be like, okay, let's see if we can make this all work. So, um, so it's, a, it's a big big move. Um, we've talked to other agencies that have done that. Um, so I think we have a pretty good game plan moving on to next year, moving into the, moving out of this building and into the new one. So, okay. and that's it. Right. Any questions? Questions. What are your new cars? Are they going to be cars or SUVs? They'll be the SUVs. The, um, what we currently have. We've, sound, we've seen several things. They're all-wheel drive, um, especially with all the gear officers carry today. It's nice having that extra space. But then also on the health side of it too, um, they can just slide right in compared to getting up and down in those vehicles because the first thing it wears out on a police officer are their backs. And uh, so that's, we've seen a huge improvement on that too. And, um, you know, for the longevity in the job, you know, making sure that, you know, those, those cars fit them. You haven't had any problems with uh, the exhaust in those? No. Uh, we have not, and uh, so some of the things we're doing, we're uh, uh, working with shops, we're gonna put in some battery operated CO2 um, detectors, so if something does happen. Uh, we're waiting on a recall, and then we'll have a, a program to get them down to uh, the car dealerships to have them take a look at it. I think it's the, um, the manifolds that crack, uh, so, um, but they're just seeing if that's, uh, um, with all their models or just, you know, a certain batch of them that came out. It sounded like Ford was trying to blame it on all the equipment that you guys were installing and in <clears throat> not you, but how they're equipped after they roll out of the factory. Yeah. 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 Now the dealer well, we're, I can tell I can tell you we are not putting any superchargers on those things. We're taking them straight from the factory. So um, and we and the stuff that we put on is all the lighting and we're using their um, we used to put in our own wiring harnesses. We don't do that anymore. We we get the um, they have their own wiring harness they put in for emergency vehicles. So we tap into that. So there's no really add ons that we're doing except for putting the lights and everything else on, but we don't touch, you know, uh, you know, the systems that they put in for, so. Carol? Um, so I think the homeless problem is getting worse in Northland. I see it and I get complaints about it. We're not complaints, just that people notice. And I'm just wondering if you're building anything into the budget or how you're figuring you might start dealing with that a little bit. All we're doing now is, uh, you know, we been doing we're working on some things a notification is that going to be a 48 hour notice uh, so we're you know working with uh, uh, Brooke and Amanda uh, on, on trying to come up with a process on how we can uh, take care of that uh, I can tell you other cities are in the same boat um, it's going to be a challenge for a lot of um, municipalities in the future and how we actually you know deal with the homeless situation so uh, you know, referrals, you know, trying to, you know, unfortunately it's one of those things we identify the camps and, and push them out. And I think other municipalities are doing that. Uh, the only real place that has a, a service right now is Denver, you know, with, uh, um, and they're a large city and they can afford to um, play, uh, pay for some of those shelters and everything else. For a municipality to take that on, it'd be very difficult. Um, so did I put, to answer your question, did I put anything else in the budget? No, no, I have not. But I think it's something to think of in the future as far as you guys all getting training, I mean, the planning department, parks, so that you guys are able to go 
whatever type of events you can learn more about it, how to handle it, what other cities are doing. I, I think it's an issue that really needs to be addressed and it probably does need a budgetary figure yeah. somewhere down the line. I can tell you Commerce City just dealt with a huge camp uh, along the plat mm -hmm. and the expense of cleaning that up. Uh, they hired a third party um, group to come in because of the hazardous materials and biohazards and everything else and it was super expensive so um, and there's concerns there uh, for us too that we're discussing at the table as well for our staff to you know be safe when they're handling that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a big issue with the drugs and the, all that type of thing and then I do know that Boulder actually built a facility you know to accommodate some of the homeless and what happened was more came. So, I think you know, you, I think you heard that before. You build it, and they will come. They will, come. and it did happen yeah. that way. Yeah, you know, for Boulder. So, yeah. Just, all right. Anyone else? Yes, Kim. So this is. I'm going to sound like a broken record. Um, you don't have enough staff. I think you now you want to implement trying to go in and push rows and looking at illegal rows. You don't have enough people. We are always searching. Just today, another new advertisement for more people. I think you've got to start addressing that and getting the right staffing levels higher. And there's no increase again this year in staffing. I just I think it's a disservice to our community that we don't have enough folks on board. And I have said this for years and years, and we just see the problems getting worse. Um, the homeless issues with people camping out all over the place with the illegal grows. I just, I'm very concerned. We don't have a, a traffic unit. I don't think you know, I think we have one person now. And I just, I don't think this is enough. I know you've had a staffing plan to increase your staffing, because that's what we've heard. There's no evidence in here of increased staffing at all. So I, I think that we need to have a serious, serious look at it and get our streets covered. Um, we all get the complaints about speeders, about traffic in the school zone. And we don't have enough people for that to be able to cover that kind of stuff. Public, for me, public safety is number one concern. Our citizens have to feel comfortable. They have to feel safe. And I think that because of some of the issues that we're seeing, that is going down. I think our department does a great job. I think our parks department does a great job identifying and trying to help our residents and help the homeless people who show up in our community. But I, it's getting worse to me. And so I think address so I would like to see more staff and especially if you're going to have special projects that you're trying to do I just don't see it happening I think we're going to hear we've been trying to get the marijuana in our in our legislation we have the marijuana outreach and the visits to the to the locations you don't have enough people for the things that we need to be doing all right anyone else thank you Jim okay Public Works? Right, public Works. Good evening, Mayor Council. Kent Kisselman, Engineering Manager. I'll be presenting Public Works this evening. Uh, your proposed budget on page 116. Uh, clicker. Department summary. Uh, I'll be highlighting these in the upcoming slides. You can see where we're increased, decrease here, and I'll be again talking about those in just a few moments. These are our 16 divisions. I'm not going to go over each division unless you want me to. I'll just get right into it. Okay. Uh, so in issues and key initiatives, um, first two are uh, for streets operating the sign, the sign materials and a new street sign equipment. That'll be a replacement of the existing plotter we have in the streets division, and this will be uh, to help facilitate the new logos that we'll be implementing in 2018, 17, 18, 18. <laughs> um, also in the street division is a request for a patch truck. The patch truck is the, the truck that the Streets crew uses to drive around, fix potholes and stuff. This is going to be a one-time purchase. So going back to the the numbers on the big page, uh, these are these are due to um, you know these are just a one-time kind of purchase 
deal here, and we won't be coming back for several years for that. I think the current one is like 15 years old. Next page. Distribution collection. This is a replacement of a dump truck within the enterprise fund. We, we try to keep those up to date, replace those. We replace generally one every year, either general fund or enterprise this year. The one we're replacing is in the enterprise fund. Uh, need those dump trucks for everything. And the other one is a portable grinder pump. Uh, that's just increasing our capacity to, if a break happens for our staff, to go out and be able to do an emergency and get that bypass going immediately instead of waiting for an emergency contractor to show up. We have one pump now. It's a smaller pump. This is just a larger one that will be able to handle that ability at a greater capacity. Water Resources Division. Um, these are legal services that over the last, um, and Jason could probably explain it better if you have a question, but we had it in one fund. We put it all into operating. When it was all in the other fund, it was offsetting. Then we put it all into operating, and it showed way over. So this time, we've, we've kind of balanced it out, and it's showing that uh, 250 increase in the, in the water resources legal. And we'll be putting um, the, so the purchases of water, the, the legal, the TZA, FBBG, our water rights attorneys, and all those legal fees will be built into that account, which will be different than what we've been doing um, in previous years. But it, it kind of simplifies things. And, and streamlines it, makes it uh, easier to, to get through. Wastewater Operations Division increases due to personnel. Our, you know, our headworks is coming online. We need to increase staff to, you know, run that, which again, I think David has explained before, it's counterintuitive. You've got a better running plant, but you need more staff. Um, it's, what, it's what you need, so going to have those two increases and then the increase in capital equipment. We've also streamlined this year instead of presenting budget packages where we're telling you, hey, we need this uh, pump X or via uh, variable frequency drive B, we're just saying $200,000 and $200,000 and when it breaks, it breaks and as we get, you know, halfway through the year, if we see something that's deficient or, or heading on its last leg and we're able to um, replace that piece of equipment instead of being so specific and then coming back at the end of the budget year and saying, well, we said we were going to purchase pump X, but actually pump Y broke instead. So it just kind of makes it a little easier to manage um, at a staff level. Industrial pretreatment, um, again, this is kind of regulated by the state and the EPA. These are just checks and balances we need to increase and, and uh, in costs and doing, doing business. <coughs> And those are the slides, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. All right, questions, yes, Kara. And so are you saying that the three new FTEs, you're counting for them all at the wastewater treatment plant due to the expansion of the wastewater treatment plant? Um, all three or no? I'm going to look at Ray and say, are all three there or two there and one's Rob? Okay, Ray, you right. want to come up here? Two. Please? Two are, two are at the Headworks, and one is for um, operation sanitation. So they're enterprise funds. But two will be at the Headworks, and one will be in, um, for sanitation. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Mm -hmm. Yes, two of them for our wastewater plant, the other one in the waste. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. You know, Any other questions here? Yeah. 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 I wanted to make he sure needed he the was, steps. Okay. Yeah, I need to right. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. I hate to dig down in the weeds on the signage, but uh -huh. can I go in the weeds on that? Um, explain to me, so are we, when we're upgrading the street signs, mm -hmm. you said logos, but are we doing the entire blade you of do. the sign? Yep, you need to do the entire All blade. All the blade, okay. We, we looked at different ways of, you know, patching it on and the patch looks horrendous. And so um, we're, we were already, for the last few years, implementing um, the new street signs and the new regulations based on the MUTCD. So they needed to be upgraded anyway. Right. And so they've been going through the city and upgrading those. So the, the timing of the logo comes at a great time where we don't have to go back and redo. We have to redo a few, but not as many as, as we would have if we would have made it through the entire city, replacing up to the new current signs. So um, 
they'll just continue that process with the new logo. Okay, so you're saying the 16,000 is for those all those new blades? The entire city? Blade. Like uh, the sign blade? The yeah, number, yes. Right? I call it a sign oh, blade. here comes Rob. No. I hope you don't answer before I get there. I will not. <laughs> so the 16,000 is to do 25% uh, of the city in the first year. We have four years to complete the project. We'll be coming back each year asking for 16,000 for the raw materials for the posts, bolts, and the signs. That's for all that okay. each year. 16,000 is just 25% of that. Okay. Right. So it'll so be 64,000 for the four years. So then on top of it, we've got the 58,000 for the capital equipment request of the truck, I'm assuming. The 58,000 is the sign, it's a new sign machine. It's a printer, printer so we don't have to do weeding. I know you understand signs. Um, so you have to weed all these signs when you print them, and it takes forever. Yeah. So we're, we should be able to reduce our cost for creating these signs by about 60% on every sign for labor. Because we don't have to spend the time weeding, just print it, and it's on the sign. So you don't have to weed all that extra material on. So do you have any idea when you're talking and that's only 25% of the city, how many signs that actually is? I wish I, I don't I know. know. Right. I'm just yeah. trying to figure, nine, I mean, yeah. 58,000 is a lot. Mark, I think it's 9,000. It's not. It's like 9,200 total signs, street signs. Yeah, just a lot. And we did purchase a truck too, right? The sign yeah. truck is purchased at yeah. this year, it's the last year. Okay. So, I mean, obviously you already have the truck, but it just seems like maybe it would have been cheaper to have a company. I'm not talking to my company at all. I'm just saying a company to change those out instead of all of this. Because now, how many people are going to actually be used to make the signs, install the signs? We can use one person in the sign, in the sign shop to make the signs and two people will install them. Um, we looked at the cost and it's probably 30% cheaper to have us do it ourselves than it was on the bids that we were looking at to get that. Okay, so you did bid it out. Yeah, we so looked at all that cost, and then we looked at two companies on what it would cost to do it, it was just very expensive. We decided it was much cheaper for us to do it in house. And it's all staff that's already existing that yes. you're going to use to implement Not that program? Issues. Okay, okay. We might steal somebody from Scott's group or from Wade Water, Waste Water, every once in a while we need it for something else, but for the most part, we'll all be streets group. Okay, so I just want a little clarity. So when you're redoing it, are you putting the color logo on all yeah. signs? Yes, okay. Okay. I believe Any? we are. Are we, Margo? The color logo? I think we are. I think so. Yeah. All right. So one that's going to look the nicest. That would be the white one, right? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't started those yet. We won't start until 2018. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you um, for clarification. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Jason. Okay. Um, so we've gone over a couple weeks ago the, the budget in total for the proposed budget. Tonight was the department specific budget. Uh, the next meeting that we have scheduled uh, is September 25th for the public hearing. Uh, we also tentatively have an opportunity on September 18th desires to have another discussion about the budget. Uh, if there's something that you guys feel like we need to touch on in a little bit more detail, uh, we can block that out okay. kind of at your direction. All right. Well, let's just stick with September 18th. Is there any comments? Do you want to uh, have any more discussion in detail uh, about any particular department's budget? Um, I personally, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead and like Hold on, hold on, <laughs> one at a time here. Okay, so, Marcy. So my question is actually, you might not be able to answer this tonight, but um, to me it's really helpful to be able to see the running list of the unfunded requests mm -hmm. because I think when there are times that two years down the road the department says I've been asking and we don't know that, it makes it harder for us to make choices. Um, but I have on the unfunded it says business marketing and it said twenty thousand and I'm just curious, is that an economic development thing that didn't get funded and to what extent? Like what was it? Um, 
Mayor and Council, um, to address Marcy's question. That was $20,000 that we were going to, a new program that we were going to implement specifically for marketing of small businesses. It would be on a case-by-case -case basis depending on their need, but marketing is always their number one issue that they're always needing, mostly the small businesses. So they would actually write a grant proposal to us of what they're needing. So it can include website design. It could include marketing materials, and we were going to put a program together specifically not to exceed five thousand dollars per purse or per business. And they would actually write a small mini business plan of how they were going to put the marketing together, a marketing plan per se. Answer your question. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Here on there. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that I, I think it's important to have it as a placeholder, so that if somebody. Yeah. I mean, this needs time to settle sometimes, and I think it's a good thing just to keep it as a placeholder yep. on the agenda. All right. Okay, and we'll <clears throat> we'll check back between now and then uh, to, to identify if there's anything that we need to put on specifically okay. uh, that we can put in the packet or just bring it back in, okay. in total and then hit some specific items that, uh, okay. that you Any other have. comments about that? All right. So we'll plan for go. that for September okay. 18th. And the 25th, the public hearing. Yes. And yeah. the adoption of the budget is October 23rd. If everything, it must go well. Yes, okay. correct. All right. All right. We are finished with the uh, departmental presentations. The next thing on the agenda is November 7th ballot questions. So are you going to handle that? Or? Sure. Okay. I'm going to have. Or Joanna? I'm going to have Joanna come up as well. Uh, to address any questions you might have. So sure. uh, this item uh, was laying out in the memo uh, basically for council consideration of four uh, ballot questions for November 17th, or November 7th of 2017 uh, coming up. Um, we're really looking for direction tonight um, is if you want the staff to uh, prepare and put the resolutions on for next week's meeting to adopt uh, the, the questions. So the first question is a Tabor question, and it's specific to the extension of the form of levy uh, property tax. Uh, this tax provides annual revenues about a, a million dollars, and it's dedicated for road reconstruction uh, projects. Uh, currently, it's set to expire at the end of 2019. Uh, getting the extension, you know, well, Allow council and staff to plan for future construction and actually implement some of the construction uh, on road roads throughout the city. Uh, the next three are charter amendments. Uh, the first charter amendment is Article 5, uh, initi Initiatives and Referendum, and the question is going to ask to amend uh, that section. And that's really to align uh, the initiative petition process with <coughs> state statute uh, that limits uh, the time to circulate and get signatures uh, for those petitions to 180 days. Uh, currently, the city's charter uh, does not identify a time frame or limit. And uh, aligning with state uh, law, uh, you know, that'll help internally process and then residents as well and the petitioners understand what the time frame is. Uh, to make that amendment uh, into our charter. Uh, the next, uh, Article 8, City Finances, it's Section 8.17, the Water and Sewer Utility Fund. Uh, that question uh, is being proposed is to repeal that section. And that, uh, that section was added in 2005 uh, to create a single fund <coughs> called the Water and Sewer Utility Fund. Uh, the language is pretty restrictive in the fact that it limits us to one fund. Uh, accounting policy, uh, you know, within the charter, uh, really is limiting to staff, future councils, uh, in identifying, you know, potentially better ways to account and be transparent with uh, with the money in, in those funds. So uh, we feel like taking uh, that out of the charter would allow uh, some greater flexibility there. And then the next <coughs> question would be uh, Article 13, uh, the Citizens Affairs Board. The question would be to repeal uh, that section of the charter. Uh, 
again, the Citizens Affairs Board was created to hear complaints and proposals from citizens, pass that along uh, through that committee, who then circulates it through the city manager and staff. Uh, you know, updated technology and uh, use of websites to uh, provide, you know, make uh, requests or ask questions, uh, email and so forth. Uh, tech, the times have changed as far as the ability for citizens to interact. Uh, and so overall this uh, question would be to eliminate uh, the CAB from, from the charter. Okay. And really it's, that's just a synopsis of what the questions are. Uh, Council, you're aware of these in a little bit more detail and it's really uh, your narrative and guidance uh, on what you would like us to bring back uh, for the next meeting. All right, and we have had uh, several study sessions on all these subjects. So uh, what is the council, are, are we comfortable with moving forward to put it on, on the ballot for a resolution? Comments? I am comfortable with moving okay. it forward to the ballot. Okay, great. Yes? I am as well. So the fact sheets you reference the 22nd, so we'll be getting those tomorrow for each of these. Yes. Okay. That, yeah, that is the plan is to distribute those to council tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Anyone have to be able to speak to Okay, Joe. Anyone else? We're all on board? And they're, they're, they'll be in draft form. They're still being uh, modified, and uh, but we'll get those out okay. uh, tomorrow. So, sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, thank thank you. you. All right. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you, folks.